Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Amanda Ellis. Whether it's the afternoon, whether it's the evening, hi. Hi, if you are a new follower. Hi, if you are a returning subscriber. This video is probably going to feel quite different because I feel different. And I'm sitting here upon about the third attempt trying to make this, wondering how to start, wondering how to hold the energies that are present this morning for us. If we were actually physically together right now and sitting maybe in a circle, whether it be in a workshop, whether it be on a hill, whether it be beside the sea, wherever, I think we would just be sitting in silence actually and allowing in this energy. But this is YouTube and obviously I have to say something. So I'm going to do my best to convey the incoming energies which are mind-blowing and affecting us at a very deep level. They're very beautiful and I think I'm just going to dive straight into it. First thing to say though is, yeah, the different energy in town. I think I mentioned on my last video that since just before Easter, I've felt this very profound shift within my own consciousness. And Metatron is saying it's not necessarily a change. It's more just a getting to know a part of yourself that's always been there. So if you're feeling this change, remember that as well, that it isn't something alien or other. It's actually a re-remembering of something that you've always had within you anyway. You're particularly going to notice this change and this shift if you allow yourself to disengage from lower energy activities. I've talked about this for a while but it might be things that you're watching, things that you're reading, um, which have served a purpose up to now. They've served a purpose, but it's as though now the blindfold has been taken off and you don't need to go there anymore. I know from my own experience that just before Easter, just before I went away on holiday, I've been very caught up in a particular story I won't even name what the story is. And I'd been watching a particular channel that was covering this story in a pretty low vibrational way, okay? But I had found myself very entangled with it and hadn't realised how much energy it was taking from me. This shift, this healing, this change that came in over Easter removed the desire to even go and knock on that door ever again. It's really quite interesting. So this channel, for example, is still there doing good business. Lots of people going to their door, but it's as though I can't explain it. What was once so compulsive is just now not even interesting. It's a really beautiful thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be, of course, channels that you're watching on YouTube. It can be material in any other genre. Um, but that's definitely something that I've been experiencing. Interested in going higher, interested in really getting to the nub of it. And the nub of it is this Christ consciousness energy. It's heart centered energy. It's walking the talk it's doing it, okay? It's doing it. I like to think I always have been, but this is just a deepening of it. The other thing that it seems to be is an expansion of the divine feminine energy within myself, but equally within the world, okay? So I'm only, and you're only able to tap into it because this divine feminine energy, this collective energy that we've been talking about for so long here on my channel, it's as though it really is arriving. It's really arriving. And it's arriving maybe in an unexpected way, in a way that we weren't expecting it to. It's as though it's snuck in the back door, but it's very welcome. And it's very rooted now. It's very grounded. 
So I know that I'm meant to bring through today some messages linked into this divine feminine wisdom. But I also just want to say that I'm not completely through this transformation that I'm going through yet. Um, And definitely the physical vessel, my body is still adjusting to it, like yours might be as well. Uh, For me, it's showing up in things such as congestion. So a lot of, I haven't got a cold or anything like that, but as soon as I sit down to try and record or, um, yeah, particularly record where it's going to be going out to the public, very congested around here. My ears are all feeling um, blocked, but like blocked when you're, you've gone to a higher altitude and you need to pinch your nose and just clear your, clear the airwaves basically. Um, So menthol would probably be quite good at this point, but uh, it's all good. It's all just part of, uh, it's all part of the transition. So hopefully you've understood all of that and what I'm talking about. And I see it as a really exciting new development. So we'll see where we go with all of this. Metatron wants me to make this more of a transmission today. So even though, yes, I've got some cards that I'm looking at here that I've already pulled off camera, which were on my grid that I set up last night, linked into these female energies. Uh, I'm not going to break up the transition by telling you exactly who's, where this is from and what deck. I'll put all of it below. Okay, so all of the decks I use will be below. Any sprays that I use, obviously we make aura sprays, they will be below. Crystals I use, they will be below. Okay, so let's just sink into this deeper space that we seem to have arrived at. And I'd like to start really with the energy of Mother Earth. And she's saying, welcome, my child, welcome. There is a nest that has been made for you. And she's showing us that are going through this process in a nest. It's literally as though there is a divine nest that has been prepared by these sacred energies um, and very much like birds go and they find twigs and they make a nest for their young. She says this is very much where we are right now. So there's an aspect here of being taken care of, being protected, being safe. And wherever you are in the world, and and this is crucial to hear because we are in times where there is much fear and there is there are changes taking place within our earth at all levels of society, politically, economically, geographically, Mother Earth doing her thing as well, needing to release pressure, needing to let off steam. Um, This is all part of, of the natural world of which we are part. But know that you are safe wherever you are and know that a nest has been created for you. Um, And I'm seeing a higher energy that is looking out for us. But I'm also hearing that we don't we won't need to be in this nest for too long. It's just a period in time um, over the next four weeks, she's saying to me in particular. Uh, So four weeks takes us ultimately towards the end of April, the beginning of May. So this April, just see yourself in Mother Earth's nest and everything that you need will be provided for you. Very much like the mama bird comes in with the worms, with the things, the berries that the, the birds need to survive and thrive and grow and get to a point where they're able to um, thrive and leave the nest of their own accord. So this is definitely a nesting period that we're in right now during the month of April. And uh, Mother Earth is saying birds also always know where best to put their nest. (laughs) Okay, hidden places maybe that, I don't know, the cat can't find or whatever. So there's something here about just hush cease with the worrying, cease with the fear, all is well type energy. I'm also getting the message from Mother Earth today that she's so profoundly grateful when we stop to notice her. 
So it could be an eclipse where we stop to notice her. We actually stop to notice the quality of the light. We stop to notice that it's gone quiet, that the birds have ceased chirping for a little while, that we connect to the land beneath our feet, that we look at the shadows cast on the ground. Um, that we also appreciate the distinction between the totality of darkness and then the blinding light that comes with all of the light codes where the uh, sun has, is rebirthing herself through this process of eclipse. So it could be eclipse, but equally it can be any day where we just stop to notice the sunset. We stop to notice the sunrise. We stop to notice the rain upon our face, the sun upon our face, etc. Giving thanks to all of the elements, giving thanks to everything that Mother Earth provides for us and realising that she is our mother and she is a mother that loves us. Um, she's also a mother who is able to, when needed, give us the medicine that we need to grow um, stronger. Okay, so the first energy stepping forward is Mother Earth. Um, now tapping into the energy of the ancestors as well. So ancestral wisdom linked into, for example, eclipse or any phenomenon of the natural world. Okay. The ancestors live within us. The ancestors live within our bones, within our blood, within our DNA. They breathe through us. They move through us. They're able to touch the earth again through us. But they also do, do so through new eyes. Your eyes that's able to see the world in a new way in a way that they couldn't, in a way that they weren't allowed. They're able to see this earth again in a different time scale with all of the changes that have happened, technological changes, advancements, changes in society, etc. Also, I'm feeling a profound sadness sometimes that the ancestors see that we're making the same mistakes that their generation made. Whether this be war, whether this be fighting, whether this be patterns which they held during their lifetime, which they see repeated in future generations, i.e. us. And they're asking and pleading with us to be the ones who are able to break the patterns, change the patterns, and be the ones who bring in a freer, happier, healthier energy to the family line, the cultural line, the national line, and the global line. And it starts with us. And I'm seeing Mother Earth now and she is circled by ancestors. It's like a chain of ancestors and they are holding hands and they are encircling the whole planet, the whole globe. And there is so much love. There is so much power. There is so much healing coming through them. And it's showering into all of the countries of the world, all of the places that need it the most, all of the families that need it the most, all of the communities that need it the most. Seeing the world encircled with these ancestors, who, who, who whoever they were when they were alive, are even wiser now they have passed over the veil. They're able to see things from a different perspective, from a higher perspective. They're able to remember soul contracts. They can see the karma maybe playing out as well. But they are just 
blasting this earth at this time with healing, with intention, positive intention, and they are willing us on. They're willing you on, they're willing your relationships on, they're willing your businesses on, they're willing your health on. Receive the blessings of this multitude of ancestors from all nations, from all corners of the earth that are encircling this planet now, bestowing blessings, blessings upon you. Okay. And now I'm seeing a second ring around this planet and it's a ring of archangels and angels. And there is an angel for every season. There is an angel for every emotion. There is an angel for every problem. There is an angel for every celebration. There is an angel for every person. There is an angel for every nation. There is an angel for every one of us. And again, there is just this excited hum that I'm hearing with the angels, a vibration that is to do with laughter, it is to do with sound, it is to do with light, it is to do with joy. And again, this beautiful, it's like a bracelet of angelic bracelet around the whole globe, circling round it, uh, again, willing us on, trying to help us to transcend these lower timelines, to let go of our need to be fearful, to let go of our need for gossip, to let go of our desire to get involved with things that don't really impact our day-to-day -day lives, to help bring joy to your home, to your relationship, to your life, to concentrate on that and to also be there for your neighbour and your neighbour's neighbour. So I'm just feeling this very excitable, happy, joyful energy that these archangels are bringing and angels are bringing. And then this focused, powerful intention of the ancestors, like an inner ring around our beautiful planet. It's really lovely. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the earth herself. And I'm going down deep into her core and I'm just feeling into the energy that is there. And what's interesting about the core of the earth, when I really go into the core of Mother Earth, it feels very settled. The energy feels very settled. Um, I'm, I'm just hearing that word, settled, calm, peace. Um, so we are being invited to tune into the core of Mother Earth whatever is going on on her surface, which is manifesting, whether it be a quake, whether it be a flood, whether it be a fire, whether it be anything that can be difficult for us as a human being living upon her. I'm also seeing deforestation and contamination of her waters, but deep within her at the core of Mother Earth, I feel a sense of great peace. And she's saying to me, it's because I know that we will be okay. I know that I will be okay. It's as though she knows that her soul contract as a consciousness, planet Earth, Mother Earth as a consciousness, her soul contract will be fulfilled. What she means by that is that she's like that she's the nest. So she's she's the one that will fulfill the contract she has for the people that are upon her for however long that's meant to be. Um, and then when she's meant to cease to be, as all planets eventually will be, in some far off date, then it will be completed. But it's not now. She says, I have many years left. And there's just a biz I'm hearing business as normal from her. Business as normal. Um, there is no drama. The drama is going on on the surface of me, she's saying, and created 
by man kind mankind creating the drama she's saying if you tune into the core of me i'm at peace and i give you that peace it's really beautiful okay Okay, so thank you, Mother Earth, for all that you give us, for the coming eclipse. Have you anything to say on the coming eclipse? Revelation, awakening, wonder, as they always have been and always will be. All is well. All is well. All is as it should be. All is well. Just feel her energy as it flows through you and around you. And then feel the energy of those ancestors willing us on. And with the ancestors, I'm seeing a different energy now. I'm being taken to something like a horse race, but it's as though we are the horses in the race. Human Humanity are, is the horses in the race. We are the ones in the race. And the ancestors are in the stand and they're cheering us on. Every single person in the race, humanity's race, even the one that comes last, comes first in the eyes of God. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> now I'm hearing that song by Hot Chocolate. Everyone's a winner, baby, that's for sure. <laughs> Errol Brown, I'm seeing the energy of Errol Brown. Is he still alive? I don't know. Anyway, everyone's a winner, baby, that's for sure. Getting that energy coming through very, very strongly. Really take that into your heart. Take that into your soul, that you're a winner, that you're a survivor, you're a winner. We're all winners because we came here to this planet at this time of great awakening, of great change, of great transformation. It's an extraordinary place to be. And that's why we have to let these lower energies go of gossip and fear and worry and get back into the wonder get back into the wonder of it all. Okay. Step into the energy of Mary Magdalene now. Mary Magdalene. And I'd like to talk about past lives with Mary Magdalene. All the times that you've been here. All the times that we've been together. All the times that we've broken bread and shared wine. All the times that we've come together as community. All the times that we've come together in love. All the times that we've come together in grief all the times that we've come together in celebration. I see you. I see who you really are. I see your essence. I remember it from so many lives. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Do you remember our work? Do you remember our calling? Do you remember our compassion? Do you remember our healing? Do you remember our medicine? Do you remember our medicine? Feminine wisdom. Feminine medicine. Feminine medicine of the heart, 
of the hands, of the soul, of the crown, of the feet. We have always worked together. You and me, we have always worked together. We have always found each other. We have always remembered our mission. Now is the time to reignite that spark, that wisdom, to remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. I remember you. I remember you. I remember you. I remember you. We have much work to do. The world needs our gentleness. The world needs our grace. The world needs our light. Many are mistresses to the darkness without even knowing. You are a child of light. You are a child of mine. Remember your bloodline. Remember your bloodline. She's bringing something out which is covered in a, uh, a shawl or a blanket. It's like a, it's something in a box. It's a gift. It's something that she's kept of yours that belongs to you. And she's handing it to you now. It's shrouded for some reason. It's dusty. But whatever is inside is still pristine. I feel for many of you, whatever is in the box contains water. Or I'm now being shown water as well. The gift is for you to discover and to unwrap, but I'm also now being shown water. I'm being shown a metal, very beautifully ornate, decorated um, metal water basin which is handheld and it she she she's holding it and she's moving it towards your face and you're being asked to splash your face with the water splash your face with the water pat yourself dry with the with the with the towel wash your hands in the water Just touching your feet, re-anointing you. You are ready, is what she says. You are ready. Let us go out into the world and be and do and say what we always have done and been and said. You will be shown you will remember, I am here. Okay. So she's receding a little bit and I'm now going to tune into Sophia, Divine Wisdom Energy. Ancient 
Gnostic feminine wisdom. Sophia. Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Wisdom bringer. I'm being shown an old vault. I don't know where this is, but it's an old vault. It's set in stone. It feels as though it's somewhere like, hmm, I was gonna say Egypt, but I feel Ethiopia as well. It's, it's a place with a name beginning with E anyway. Or maybe these are just many places around the world where there is wisdom within the caves. Going to Greece as well. But the unifying thing seems to be stone. Stone chapels. But not chapels as you would know it. Stone caves, stone vaults, locked away secluded, hidden. The key has been found. The key has been found. This Sophia wisdom coming back. I'm hearing frontal lobe linked into the brain. I don't really know what that means, but frontal lobe, whether this is a place where there's particular memories, where it's stored, I don't know. Sophia energy. I'm seeing very old women, keepers of the grail, keepers of this wisdom. I'm being taken to some of the places in our world where they are most suppressed. The, fe the female species is the most de depressed and suppressed. The Middle East, the Far East. I'm being shown Iran, Afghanistan. India. The seeds are there. I'm being given the analogy of petrol creating flames, like a track of petrol, which when lit, just the whole thing explodes. But this is a positive thing. It's like a trail of seeds. Sophia wisdom. It's, it's, in the, it's in the grid lines of the earth. All it takes is a few events or energies to ignite it. And once it's ignited, it will go around the whole grid very quickly. Women remembering who they really are. Who they really are what they have to contribute, what they have to give, their true nature, the divine feminine true nature. And in many ways this Sophia wisdom feels so ancient, so old, but I'm hearing, but it's so new. <laughs> it's as though, it's weird, it's like a circle that's just comes back in on itself. It's, it feels new, but it's not. It's very, very old, it's very, very ancient. It's very accessible. It's not as hidden as we think it is. It's not as concealed as we think it is. It's laying dormant in many, but it's getting close to the surface. Um, an eruption of this energy, 
I'm now being shown volcano energy, volcanic activity, helping to blow, blow the old energy out of town for this dormant energy that's laid within these vaults to be unleashed and released to the world. But Mother Earth is going to help this process. I'm not sure where these volcanoes are. I'm not being shown. But I'm feeling the energy of fire here. More than water, fire. Lava. Lava being fluid and able to form new structures. Okay. Where to go next? To go to Mother Mary. The doorway to so many of these other feminine energies for many people. The mother archetype that is well known, not always completely understood in the totality of who she is and what she can do and what she represents. But it's a familiar face, the Mother Mary energy, a familiar face. And it's as though I'm in somewhere like ancient Egypt or ancient Greece. Again, I'm seeing huge stone gateways and Mary is there and it's like she's beckoning us forward, beckoning us. Come on, beckoning. C come and explore. Come deeper. Come and look. Come and look. Come on, it's safe. It's safe. It's time. It's time. Come on. Come with me. I'll show you. So she's coming through with this beautiful gatekeeper type energy. Safe, familiar face. To reveal other familiar faces that we've just forgotten. Other expressions of what it is to be female. Other expressions of feminine wisdom. And there, sitting alone, I also now see the energy of Lilith. And Mary, Mother Mary, greets Lilith. Lilith gets up and kisses her on the cheek. And Mary kisses her on the cheek back. They know each other very well. They're two old friends. Lilith is not abandoned by Mary. Mary is not abandoned by Lilith. Two very different examples in terms of how they have been portrayed, of femininity, embracing each other, laughing. I see them walking away into the distance and they've got like their arm around each other, walking away, chattering, nine to the dozen, putting the world to rights. <laughs> Looking at all the work that has to be done no division, no separation. And I'm now seeing Lilith and Mother Mary walking into a great big hall. And this is more of a modern day setting. It's like a huge, great big lecture theatre. I'm being taken somewhere like, it feels somewhere like Sydney in Australia. I've no idea what the Sydney Opera House looks like, but it feels as though it could be somewhere like that. It's that type of huge audience. It's an international audience. There's something about the Sydney Opera House and the fact that it looks like two sails, two ships. Australia being a place where many came to and landed at, many enforced, enforced landings, enforced exiles, but have made it home living amongst those who were always there. 
why are you taking me to Australia? Just because it's a nice place to be, they're saying. <laughs> they're nice. It's a nice place to be. I'm being taken to culture, to art. The importance of that, as I've said before, but I'm, I'm being I'm being shown like art galleries and I don't know culture, and it's like they're going through these different galleries and exhibitions, and they're seeing how they've been portrayed through the years. And there's a degree of laughter. There's no victim energy in Lilith in terms of look how they portrayed me. She's laughing. She's not laughing at people. She's just laughing because laughter is a high vibrational frequency. Look how wrong they got it, but let's put the record straight. It's that type of energy. And equally, I, I feel Mother Mary also looking at some of the illustrations and paintings and statues of her and she's appreciating them but she's saying but I was I'm more than that I'm not just that there are other sides to me as well I'm a little bit Lilith and Lilith is a little bit Mary and as women when we really get that and we understand that that we're all of these archetypes How powerful will that be? There's just so many of them flooding in. I can feel the energy of Kali, Guan Yin. And then people who we've known in our own life, who've died and passed over, different expressions of what it is to be a woman. People who are well known, who are celebrities, Marilyn Monroe, someone that I've channeled, Princess Diana, and then other energies, Margaret Thatcher channeled her too, another expression of what it is to be female, Bodicea, felt that Margaret was Bodicea, another expression of what it is to be female. So many different expressions of what it is to be female. And then I'm being taken up, pre-incarnation. What you choose, how you wish to express yourself in this world as a woman. What archetype, they're saying, what archetype did you choose? What type of mother did you choose? What type of sister did you choose? If you're a man, what type of wife did you choose? What type of female friend did you choose? Is there a common trait? Are they all a certain way? Maybe you chose that. What have you learned from it? Are you tired with that? I don't mean tired of a wife, I just mean tired of a pattern. See if you can help to shift that. You can't change anybody else, but you can change the pattern that you've got within yourself that's showing you that. Going back to your mother. You chose your mother. And you chose this planet, planet Earth. And so many people don't want to be here. Fearful of this earth. Don't like the experience, want it to all be over with. You're dissing your mother. You're dissing Gaia. You wanted to come here. You wanted to have this experience. Let's have gratitude for that. And then back to your own mother, she gave you life. Let's have gratitude for that. Let's unclench our body. I'm realizing I'm feeling tense as I bring this through. 
issues we may have with our own mother, issues with how safe we feel on this planet. Let's just relax that now. Let's just breathe into that tension we might be feeling in our body and let it go. Let it go. The more we judge another woman, the more we berate another woman, the more, the more that we put another woman down, we put ourselves down. Let's let those shackles go. And let's reinforce and strengthen the bonds of genuine sisterhood. Let us also strengthen the relationship we have with ourself. Let us get to know ourself. And this is so much of what this transformation of metamorphosis is right now for so many of us. Who are you? Who are you? And in a world which really doesn't want you to look at that, will want, wants you to dis dis distract and not look at that, let's look at that. Such a gift. Such a gift. A lotus blooms from the deep, rich mud into which she plunges her roots and draws great nourishment. From this mud made of water and earth, growth happens and great beauty is revealed. Your soul lotus thrives in the depth of emotion and the aliveness of your body into which she can plant herself and unfold as a lotus of light. Alana Fairchild's words there from Quan Yin Oracle. Very true beautiful way to end this recording. You're the lotus. Whatever stage you are in terms of trying to find your way through the mud, know that you will bloom and know that this divine feminine energy is growing day by day, breath by breath, moment by moment. And it will and already has transformed this world. Much love. Take care. See you all again soon. Bye for now. Bye.